Are you building your first generative AI solution and wondering what to do about user experience? Computer's broken! Is it a PC or a Mac? Yes! <laughs> Here are five simple tips to put you on the right track. Welcome to the milestone 20th episode in our generative AI series. Before recording this episode, I did some quick Googling about user experience and generative AI applications. Unfortunately, 95% of what I read attempted to translate user experience practices from traditional web and mobile apps to generative AI. Knowing that purple is the trendy color for AI isn't going to help you solve real problems. So I decided to share lessons we and other engineering teams have learned from building LLM applications powered by chat interfaces. The user experience can be challenging because some customers will have high expectations and quickly become frustrated when it doesn't meet them. Others won't know where to start and will give up without trying. Here are five tips to help you overcome the most common failure points. UX tip one, collaborate with a power user. There are too many nuances in solving real problems and LLMs are still not good at many of them. Power users can help you make big initial decisions such as selecting the most appropriate data sources, defining evaluation metrics, or clarifying tasks. Too many teams start with a general concept like chat with your documents. While this is fine for a prototype, it won't lead to a useful product without a more specific mandate. UX tip two. Guide users with LLM agents. Here is a simple example from episode four. The workflow begins with the agent evaluating the feasibility of answering the question. In this case, it found the question to be reasonable and the process continues. So you're probably wondering, what is an unreasonable question? Well, an example would be asking how to insert Charlie into the database. Not surprisingly, the agent advises that it cannot help me insert Charlie into the database. Thanks for your help, Charlie. You can also restate and confirm user requests before beginning tasks or suggest follow-up tasks. UX tip three, provide starters like the conversation starters in OpenAI's GPTs. One useful starter is, what data do I have? Users, particularly new ones, often have no idea what data is available and what it means. This question is a low risk way to provide instant value. UX tip four, have an evaluation framework. I cover evaluation frameworks in episode six. Without one, you will unknowingly break working prompts while trying to improve your application and degrade your user experience. UX tip five, satisfy users before optimizing. Some teams prematurely optimize for speed or cost before ensuring they can solve user problems. The most common mistake is replacing a powerful foundational model like GPT-4 with GPT-3.5 or a smaller open source model before demonstrating feasibility. What results is a faster user experience for an application that nobody uses. Here is a quick summary of the five tips. With the exception of the evaluation framework, they are all quite simple. This is the type of practical advice you won't hear from other YouTube channels, so be sure to subscribe and sign up for our email newsletter so you don't miss an episode. Of course, the most important user experience decision is ensuring you are working on a problem that matters, so watch our next video on discovering AI opportunities with generated data. <laughs>